So uh, we learned that there are two Kirchhoff's laws, the uh, junction rule uh, and the loop rule. And both of those on their own are uh, pretty straightforward. When we start using them uh, in practice, we can use them to solve really complex circuit problems. And so we'll uh, go through a, a practice problem here as a way to try and understand how to use those two rules uh, to solve our complex circuits. So those, I think, con conceptually, they're not terribly difficult, um, but we want to know, we're going to do a little practice problem here because I think the, the actual doing is the hardest part here. How do you do it? First of all, you have to label the current in each branch and guess where it's going. Okay. Um, in this circuit, that's relatively easy. We know it's going that way. Um, but it doesn't matter if you guess wrong. You're going to get a negative current if you guess wrong. And that just means, oh, I made a mistake. The current's actually going in the other direction. But it doesn't hurt the math in the problem. Okay, so you label the current branch. You identify and label any junctions and loops. Okay. Um, and then you set up an equation for each junction and each loop. Uh, with a known in it. And your goal is to find as many uh, different equations as you have unknowns. So if I have three unknowns, I don't know the current in three loops or three branches, um, then you're going to need three equations to solve that. And these are the forms of that those equations, right? This is your junction equation. Current in is equal to current out. Or your EMF minus all of your um, voltage drops equals to zero. And then you solve that set of equations, which is the mathy part of it. I got to warn you here, the big problem is note keeping and sign management. You've got to be clear what your junctions are, what direction you've assigned for loops, um, whether a voltage is dropping or going up. All of these things uh, are really important. So let's solve a problem. Let's look at this guy right here. We've got two battery sources, okay? Um, and then a number of different resistors and some internal resistance. We wanna know what the current is uh, in this circuit. Okay, so we label the currents and we guess at directions. I'm gonna just guess, you know, the positive, uh, that the current's gonna be going this way, right? Because our battery is gonna be pushing it that way. And that battery is going to be pushing it that way. So if I'm going to guess the current I3 is going this direction, I2 is going this direction. Well, then if that's uh, Kirchhoff's law is going to junction law is going to be right, then the current here must be going in the leftward direction. So those are our guesses for the current. And then we want to label our junctions and loops. So we're going to call this loop A. And we're going to call this loop B that goes around here. And then we only have two junctions, so we're going to call that A and B. So we have potentially four equations here and three unknowns. We know the voltages, or the resistances. We want to know the currents. That's one current, two current, three current, right? So we define the equations. So start with the junctions, right? So what is this? Uh, equation at A. I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. Okay, got that right there. Equation B. I2 plus I3 is equal to I1. Now take a close look at these. What's our problem? They're exactly the same. Okay, so that we can only use one of those. It doesn't give us, doesn't help us solve the problem to have two equations that are the same. But notice we have two loops and two junctions and three unknowns. So we actually knew that one of those equations was going to be uh, extra superfluous. Uh, so we, we take that equation. So this gives us one equation. So now we need to do the loop. Um, remember, we're going to go in the direction of current. Batteries are going to give us a positive number. Uh, resistors are going to give us a negative number. So loop A from point A minus R2 times I2, right? That's going to be our voltage drop across there. 
Then we're going to go plus E1, because that's going to be a battery. Then we're going to go minus R, little r1 times R I2. That's this term. And then finally, to get through that loop, we have to go through this guy too, R1 times I1. Uh, and that, again, is negative, And that's going to be 0. Loop B, we're doing the same thing. Okay, we're going to start from A. Uh, again, we're going in the positive direction through the battery, so that's going to be a plus. We're going to subtract IR, subtract IR, and subtract IR. Okay, and make sure you're keeping those, all your, um, this is, I don't like the fact that they use little R1 and big R1, so you, uh, I would suggest using uh, different numbers here, but just make sure your note taking is good. Um, and it's just a matter of tracking that current through your loop. Okay. Now we have three equations. One, two, three, and three unknowns. So we know it's solvable. Okay, at least, <laughs> at least in theory. Now we solve the equations. So we take our known values and sub them into the loop equations. All right, so all we're doing is adding values here. Um, we know R2 and R1, uh, all these resistance values. So we can reduce that to 18 volts equals I2 times 3 ohms plus I1 times 6 ohms. And then this is equal to that. Now we want to solve these equations in terms of I2 and I3. OK, so we're going to solve, basically, we're going to solve we have an equation for I2 that's in terms of I1, and we're going to have an equation for I3 that's in terms of I1, and then we're going to sub them into our third equation, and that'll give us a solution. So just rewriting this and this leads to this. Okay. All we did here, let's take the first one. We moved this guy over here so we had 18 volts minus i1 times 6 ohms then we divide by 3 ohms and that gives us the 6 amps uh, and divide the 6 ohms by 3 ohms and that gives us 2 times i1 did that for the other one sub these into our junction equation remember this is our junction equation right uh, sub those into there and here then we have a known term i1 known i1 and i1 so that's going to give us a solvable equation and we can solve that for i1 okay so now we know that we were right about the direction of our current here and that it's 4.75 amps now we can take this guy and put it in these and solve for I2 and I3. So let's do that. So we take uh, our equation here, put in our known value for I2, and we get, or for I1 rather, and we get a solution for I2. Now I2 says negative 3.5, right? This is here. We assumed it was going to go this way. It turns out it doesn't. This battery is so powerful. Uh, that it actually pushes current back through our uh, our EMF. But that's okay. We were wrong, but we learned something. Uh, and our math, we don't have to redo anything. It just all, now we know that this loop, um, that the current goes through that loop that way, and that our second loop is really this up here. It's going to, it'll go all the way around like that. So why was our assumption wrong? Well, just because uh, E2 is very strong. Okay, the resistance here is also strong. So you're pushing a bunch of current this way. It doesn't all want to go that way because you've got a larger resistance here. Uh, and so some of it is going to push back through the battery here. Why would you do something like this? Well, if you wanted to charge the battery, remember we said, how do you charge a battery, you do work on it, right, to push charge uh, towards, uh, towards
towards the positive terminal. And that's essentially what you're doing here. You're pushing charge onto that positive terminal. Uh, so in, at least in theory, you could be recharging this battery.